What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, this channel has a great honor. Great honor. I receive Trey, Trey McBride in our channel. Welcome. Oi. Welcome so, to Nick Fans Brazil channel, bro. Hello. Thank you for having me. Ah, thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much. No problem. First of all, first of all, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Hey, Brazilians. Um, like you said, my name is Trey McBride. I'm Deuce McBride's oldest brother. Um, I play professional basketball as well in Australia and Germany. Um, I've also played in Serbia, Macedonia, and, and Canada for a little bit. So I've been all around the world. <laughs> great bro great um i will make for you first question uh okay. what what has it been like uh to follow your brother deuce mcbride's journey with the new york knicks mm -hmm. yeah it's been a dream come true honestly uh when we were kids we used to look up to guys not just from the knicks but from all over the league and to finally see him at that level has just been really amazing. Um, it's been a little difficult for me because I'm in another country uh, with the time zones, but I still try to either wake up really early or stay up pretty <laughs> late and watch the games. I know, bro. Uh, I have a friend, for example, in Australia and okay. Germany. Oh, in okay. Germany so late so late yeah yeah it's <laughs> tough York but Knicks you know games, when, bro. when they were in the playoffs i think the game started at like a decent hour i think it was like nine or 10 p.m uh german yeah. time and that's of course easy to stay up and watch okay <laughs> i agree yeah. um what uh, what is the relationship like between you two of the cart how do you stay uh connected and supported right. uh, each other despite right. the distance and right. demands of professional life uh i would say we're just typical brothers honestly uh to answer your question about off the court you know we fight and argue but we still love each other to death um as far as being in different countries yeah it provides a little bit of a difficulty just trying to figure out, okay, it's 9 a.m. in Germany or 9 a.m. in Australia. I have to think, okay, what time is he up? Where would he possibly be? Um, and if he's in a meeting or if he's in the gym, I don't want to disturb him. Um, so that's really the only difficulty, but we stay connected basically every day, if not every day, at least a couple times a week. Um, I'll give him a text or call or Snapchat or Instagram or something to, to let him know I'm still watching him, you know? Uh, that's great, bro. Uh, and I am curious, do you have any funny or interesting histories involving you and your brother to share with us? Yeah, yeah, of course. This is usually one of my favorite stories to tell and it's not just a one-time thing. It was more so uh, just growing up, we we learned basketball at the same time. Um, I'm three years older, so when I was around nine, he was probably like six or seven. Um, and so just growing up, being kids, working out, we don't have any type of attention span, no attention to detail. And my dad would have us do a drill um, in our backyard and my dad would show us the drill. He'd go to the front yard to do some lawn work while we were supposedly doing the drill. Um, I'd always look from behind like our front driveway to see if we were out of okay. his vision. And as soon as he, I knew he couldn't see us, I was like, all right, Miles, <laughs> let's play one on one. And so we'd like move all the cones and we'd just start playing one-on-one -on -one basketball and it would get to a point where miles would do something to me i'd throw the ball at him and 
he'd start running and I would chase him into the front yard. So that's usually one of my favorite stories because he'd always just, you know, <laughs> be the little brother. And then my dad would get upset because we were supposed to be working out. And here we are wrestling in the front yard while he's cutting the grass. <laughs> Great, bro. Yeah. And uh, uh, draft today. Uh, do you have a, a history about this day with your brother? In the yeah. night, man, the draft. Yeah, yeah. So draft night took place at our high school. I don't know if that's what you guys call it, but um, <laughs> we had our like, well, his, but our family's closest friends from like anyone that kind of helped us out through our journey in basketball and just overall. Um, so we had a lot of friends that we consider close family as well as our blood relatives um, at the at the draft party. Um, so, you know, I was pretty laid back. I think we all knew he'd be drafted. I don't think we were worried that he wouldn't be, like, picked. Um, I think it was more just like, all right, when will he get picked and where will he go? Um, and, you know, once he said his name, it just felt, I, I couldn't I can't even imagine how he felt, but for me as his brother, it felt like I made it, you know, just because I'd seen him work so hard all this hard summer days that we put in, um, all the work he's put in on his own, um, it finally like paid off and it showed at the highest level. So for me, it was probably one of the most exciting things I've ever seen for my brother. Uh, I have a co-host, né? Uh, Krishna Zuanazi. Uh, he mentioned your brother before uh, this this draft for me, really? né? And mentioned your skills, né? Like right. football, né? Yeah. Football, uh, quite American football or soccer. Yeah, <laughs> bro, yes. Messi will play yeah. in Miami, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soccer now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because for us, I, uh, we mentioned uh, football. Football. Right. Uh, football. Right. Football in Portuguese. Right. Okay. Now, Messi, soccer for us. Right. <laughs> U USA, né? Miami. Yeah. And Krishna mentioned né, your brother. Uh, when I, I know in, in draft, uh, I, I make it alive, né? alive in this mm -hmm. channel. Bro, right. I'm so happy, so happy because I like it. I like it right. uh, about your skills, né? defense right. skills. I like so much. So, uh, Krishna talked about you, your brother né? before right. uh, this draft. That's um, amazing. He's got a good eye for talent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I am curious too, uh, besides your brother Deuce, I saw né, that your sister uh, plays volleyball, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. has your holy family always been very sportive? Yes, yes. I mean, it goes back to my grandparents even. Uh, my grandfather was a swimmer. My grandmother was a swimmer. Oh. My mom played tennis at Ohio State University. Uh, my dad played Division One basketball in America, and then had a ten-year professional basketball career in Germany. Oh. Um, I followed in his <laughs> footsteps in playing in Germany. My brother's obviously in the NBA, and then my little sister is playing <laughs> Division One volleyball at West Virginia. So sports is kind oh. of our thing. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, my family hasn't anybody, bro. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, bro. Yeah. That's great. And uh, apart from Deuce, uh, do you have any other favorite player in NBA? If so, why do you admire them? Ooh. Well. Before he passed, Kobe was and still is my favorite player. Um, I just, you know, I was, I'm too young to remember Michael Jordan, uh, so I didn't really get to mm. see him. But Kobe was like, you know, my generation's MJ. Uh, so I was a big Kobe guy. But currently, I'm a big fan of Luka, 
I love Kyrie. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually a big fan of Jalen Brunson. Um, I actually (laughs) watched him. Yeah, like, he's a Knicks guy. But before (laughs) he was even with the Knicks, I liked his game when he was at Villanova. Um, Him and Josh Uh Hart. So I was probably 16 or 17 when he was at Villanova. Um, And I just remember, like, watching him because he's not that big of a guy, but he plays hard, uses his body well. And I love how fundamentally sound he was. It's very rare to get guys to play off of two feet, to jump stop in the paint, play off of two feet, and to, you know, get a shot off at his height. So – I was just in awe of how well he did it, and it even translates to the NBA now. Um, so him, Dame, really any elite guards. Um, but right now, because I'm in Europe, I'm following more EuroLeague players. So I watch a lot of, like, Mike James and uh, TJ Shorts. He, play, he plays for Bonn in, in the basketball Bundesliga in Germany. About Michael Jordan, bro. I understand mm-hmm. Yeah. I am Nick. I am Nick fan uh, since '92. Okay. Okay. Uh, this book. Oh, uh, this With book. Ewing, uh, is that this guy. Yeah. Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason. Yeah. Nah. Ewing start. Bro, bro. I have a secret. Not a secret. I almost became a Bulls fan. Almost. 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 But, uh, uh, but, but, uh, I like so much New York, okay? Right. And uh, Patrick Ewing, I like so much this guy. Right. And uh, Mega Drive, bro. Uh, video game, Mega right. Drive. Uh, okay. my, my cousin, uh, Choice, Chicago Bulls. Uh, and in oh, Brazil, okay. the major uh, people in the in this time like mm-hmm. so much chicago bulls and because michael I like it too michael jordan but uh w- when i choice now i try mm-hmm. lakers with magic johnson uh this this tape has uh bulls versus blazers this game okay uh, uh i choice lakers i don't like it uh boston i don't like it i try with the knicks in the in this video game and i right. like it bro yeah <laughs> mega drive and patrick right. ewing bro is the is what, the what, the reasons i become what, a uh, fan bro what game system was that on was that like a sega or a nintendo 64 yeah. Oh, oh, this game is, is 92. Oh, so okay. long, long time ago. And uh, yeah. I, I, my cousin uh, bring uh, this game, Bull versus Blazers in Mega Drive okay. for oh, us that's play. Oh, system. Okay. Yes. And uh, okay. I, I, I choice a, a team. And uh, okay. choice. Okay. Uh, I choice uh, the Knicks. And uh, I, I, I love it. Uh, I, wow. I remember, bro the olympic games brazil play with the united states i remember uh when when this time i am a nick fan uh, okay when when i have this mm-hmm. game so wow. I, I i i understand about michael jordan okay i yeah. understand you like michael <laughs> jordan because it's impossible bro uh, for it's me hard not to like him yeah yeah, no, nobody, bro, for me. <laughs> and uh, the Knicks, Patrick Ewing, bro, uh, it's a monster, bro. It's so stronger. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, bro, uh, I love so much this guy. I, I yeah. have a dream, bro. Bring Patrick Ewing this channel. In the future, I will, I will got it. I, 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 I got it, nah. I in this channel, um, Charlie Ward, Charlie Ward, nah. Uh, okay. come to uh uh-huh. right. in the past wow. uh, two years two years ago charlie ward na, in nick fans brazil channel alan houston make a alan video for, a, for us uh-huh. really two times bro two times that's sweet. um uh-huh. oh i love alan houston too bro yeah. <laughs> and uh wow. and uh two sons 
from Anthony Mason, né? Uh, okay. Anthony Mason Jr. and Antoine Mason. Uh, I, okay. I bring in this channel too. But, bro, I, I love this team in 92. Yeah. I, I love wow. so much, bro. Blood in the wow. Garden, bro. Blood yeah. in the Garden. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You've been with the same team for so long. Yes, bro. So distance, so so distance for me, bro. Yeah. Oh, it's complicated. In in the future, I I hope soon I will make a, a trip from this channel from New York. Me yeah. and uh, another Brazilians uh to New York now. Nah? See the Knicks. I talk so much with the channels from New York, um yeah. journalists. Yeah. I I make I make it an uh, interview, for example, with Alan Hunt, né? Bill Piro, Monica McNutt, né? from MSG Network right. né? in this channel. I am so happy, bro. Today, Trey McBride in this channel, too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so happy, bro. This channel make me so happy, bro. This That's channel amazing, me man. so happy. That's really amazing. And uh, I feel close from new york i feel close with yeah. the new york knicks it's amazing bro it's yeah, amazing that's, that's amazing <laughs> and i i have questions about you bro i am curious yeah. about you okay yeah, of course and um oh how was uh your journey uh to becoming a professional basketball player what were the biggest uh challenges Okay. Um, I'll start with the biggest challenges of getting here. Uh, just the sheer amount of like players. So America has 300 million people. So that's mm -hmm. very competitive. Um, and as far as getting overseas, like the challenges, there's a, there's so many players, but not enough opportunities. So that's a, that's obviously a big challenge. Um, I want to say the Brazilian top league is actually pretty good. I have, a, I have an old teammate who plays in Brazil. Um, and so it's just really difficult to go from college to overseas because there's just not enough jobs. Um, as far as my journey, I graduated college in 2020. Um, and I signed my first contract in 2021. Um, So it was a few months before I actually got something. I think I signed in like January, went to Macedonia. That didn't really Whoa. go too well. And then I went to Serbia and I was in Serbia for like four months because I went in the middle of the season. Um, and that went really well and went home for the summer, just trained, worked, um, had a training camp deal with the G League Toronto Raptors team. And then after that, I went to Australia and I was in Australia probably for seven months. And I, I basically say I live here now because um, <laughs> I have a girlfriend who's from Australia and I, you know, I'm I living saw. With her. Yeah, I, I, I live with <laughs> her, her family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so she she lives with me in Germany when we're not in Australia. So, yeah, it's been a that feels long but it's really been short as far as um my journey that's just you know a small fraction of you know getting to be a pro um everything before was just working out and really just trying to separate myself from the other millions of kids that wanted to play in college and then at the next level in australia i i remember a player Uh, Philippine player. Do you know okay. about Kai Soto? Kai Soto, yeah. So, bro, funny thing, I make yes. it, uh, I make it, Trey, uh, a videos in my channel. Yeah, bro, so many, so many Philippines in this channel yeah. subscribe in Nick Fans really? Brazil because Kai Soto, bro. I am curious. Do you know about I, Kai Soto? Yeah, so like this is how small the world is and the basketball world makes the world even smaller so kai okay. played for the city that i'm in the adelaide in adelaide mm -hmm. he played for the 36ers um uh -huh. so i live in adelaide and that's where i play 
when he was in America getting ready, like to be in the league and everything, he trained with mine and Miles is like fitness trainer in Cincinnati. Uh-huh. And so uh-huh. there would be times where like I would see him or in we call them open gyms. So when we're just playing pickup basketball, like he'd be uh-huh. in the gym, like working out with, you know, other pros like myself and guys who are already in the league. So I'd actually known Kai, not personally, but just known of him just from seeing him at my trainers. And then I find out that he played in Australia. So it makes the world just really small. <laughs> really? I agree. Yeah. It, yeah it's like, <laughs> totally it was, it's just weird. Yeah. It's just really <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Uh, man, what are the main skills you are consider essential for a successful uh, pl- basketball player? Well, right now, the way the game is being played, shooting is probably the most important skill for any position. From there, I would say it goes ball handling. So if you can shoot, you can dribble. And then the last one, I would just say defense. You can do those three things. You can pretty much find yourself on the floor at any level. Ah, great. And uh, what physical and mental aspects do you work on to stay a high level? Okay. Uh, man, that's a good one. The physical training, I'm sure you've seen my personal Instagram. I just posted the video yes. in the weight room. Easter is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I do a lot of strength training. Um, and as far as the mental side, my dad always taught us that you have to have a short memory as a basketball player. So that means, you know, if you make a turnover or you miss a shot, just forget about it, like move on to the next play. So I think carrying that into, you know, my professional career, because, you know, these guys are good, even at the level that I'm at, they're still very good players. Um, and you're never going to be perfect. So you might as well not let the previous play, whether you, whether it was good or bad, you know, he said, whether you make the shot or not, it should never dictate how you play the next possession. So to always just stay focused and in the moment. Ah, great. And how do you stay uh, motivated and focus on your career? Uh, right now, um, because I'm still, which is crazy, I'm considered a young player for Europe. But in the NBA, yes. I'd be considered an old guy, you know, because I'm 25. <laughs> It's complicated, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm 25. It's so crazy, the, the difference in perspective. Um. So for me to stay motivated, I want to play at the highest level um, in Europe. Obviously, NBA, you're always aiming for it, but I really love playing in Europe. So the highest level that I believe you can get to in Europe is playing EuroLeague or EuroCup or the, the Basketball's Champion League. So my goal is to get to the top division in you know Germany and then just climb my way all the way up to EuroLeague. Um, so... I think though that really motivates me because it's a future goal. And so I, I do want to reach that. When I talk uh, with basketball players, né, uh, uh, these players mentioned for me, uh, play in Europe, it's so hard, bro. Uh, it's so hard to uh, play, for example, yeah. in Spain, uh, Italy, Germany yeah. and so many countries ali uh, yeah. it's uh, hard 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 games uh, in in Europe it's it's completely different in comparison to the NBA style where it's more yes. open in the NBA uh I don't know if people understand this but like the floor is actually a little bit bigger in the NBA mm-hmm. compared to Europe and then the quarters are longer in the NBA so You play a longer game, so that's more opportunities to get on the floor. In Europe, you only play 40 minutes. Like, you play FIBA rules. And so when you don't have yes. the, that, yeah, if you don't have those <laughs> FIBA extra, rules. Yeah, if you don't have those extra minutes on the floor, those extra eight minutes, like, you know, that means you're going to get less shots, less minutes. Um, but you can be a little more physical. You have less spacing. 
Um, and so that just makes you have to be that much more perfect as a player. Um, and then on top of that, like, you know, you have to just stay in the moment, stay professional because there's things that happen overseas that don't happen in the NBA as far as job security. And I'm curious about the fans, né? Because in, in, in games, in NBA, compare it uh, with Europe, it's so mm -hmm. different, so different. Yeah. I, I saw a videos in internet, like uh, game, uh, soccer games, bro. Uh, yeah. The fans crazy, bro, in yeah. your games. Uh, do you yeah, can you... tell anything about it, this? Yeah. Um, I played Pro B in Germany, which is a lower division in comparison to the first league. And so we still had a good amount of fans coming to our games and there was drums, sirens. Uh, we <laughs> sold out and we we're playing, was it Alba Berlin's junior team? So like their, not their youth team, but you know, their farm team is what we called it. And like the game was packed and after the game, we'd beat them. And after the game, like I walked to the locker room and my, like I could barely hear anything. It was so loud. Um, and it's like the fans are into it the entire game. The last question, bro. The last question, mm -hmm. Trey. Uh, what are the most uh, valuable lessons you have learned through your basketball journey? My most valuable lesson through my basketball journey is there's two lessons kind of that go hand in hand um one is being resourceful as a player so overseas you know you don't have the same type of gym availability or resources that americans do like growing up um for every basketball court there is in america there's probably 20 football fields in brazil right because that's your guys's national yes. sport um And so as a player, you just have to learn, okay, what's around me? What can I use to get better? So if there's not a basketball court near you, but there's a soccer field, there's always something you can do, you know, on the soccer field, like strength and conditioning. So you can run on the soccer field or something like that um, and find a way to get better with the resources that is around you. So then once you get to the, to the court, you can still – play right um yes. and the and the second thing is just resilience so what that means is you know when things get tough when they're not going your way don't give up um to keep pushing forward um, i'm not sure if you can see it but i believe miles has a tattoo his one that our family saying which is only the strong survive and then he has another one for a friend of ours and it says keep going i also have the same tattoo that says keep going um and so you know those two things are only the strong surviving keep in the mentality of keep going um that's like what being resilient is all about because if you're not mentally strong enough to push through things you'll you'll have a very hard time of making it in the real world whoa bro you deserve claps bro you deserve claps thank you thank you <laughs> oh, okay, oh. i appreciate it oh, oh this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, cool. I am curious. A uh, first question, first question. Denver or Miami? Man, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because I, oh, Jokic, I, Jokic I want so nice. Denver. I want I, Denver. Miami lose the Knicks. No, I don't like Miami. <laughs> I look at it like I like Denver and specifically Jokic because I have teammates. <laughs> I played in Serbia, you know, so uh, yes, I'm, root, yeah, I'm rooting yeah. for the Serbians. But yes. also, I love Mike Malone. I love what Denver's been doing probably for the last six years. Um, uh -huh. But then Miami, how can you not root for Jimmy Butler? Like, I know he, <laughs> he, he, he's been working, man. And I've, I watched Jimmy <laughs> Butler way back when he was with the Bulls or even yes. Mar when he was with Marquette. I remember growing up watching, like, I loved his game because – he played similar to how I did with just being 
you know, aggressive, playing both sides of the ball, offense and, and defense, having no fear, physically was just bigger and stronger than guys. So how could you not root for somebody like that? But I do understand, you know, <laughs> he's got he left a bad taste in yeah, yeah, he left a bad taste in our mouth for sure. <laughs> Me so and let's say, Me and Deus. Oh, yeah, let's just, let's, just, wait, wait. let's just say we're in Denver. We're going for Denver. We're going for Denver. I don't like it, uh, Miami yeah. uh, Trey. Since uh, nine, nine things, uh, when yeah. uh, Pat Riley go yeah, out was coaching. Uh, from the Knicks to Miami, and Miami, yeah. uh, I remember Knicks won't, uh, wanted um, Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo and Pat Riley, yeah. Pat Riley, yeah. bring Alonzo to Miami, not to the Knicks, bro. Bro, Man, I, for, I remember I this how, time. <laughs> yeah, you guys just haven't had very good luck with, you know, running into <laughs> people. Pat, you guys ran into Michael Jordan. Like, that's yes. tough. Running into yes. Michael Jordan, then Reggie Miller, and uh -huh. of course, Larry Bird. Like, it is tough. Tough. <laughs> Yes, oh, uh, I like I like it, and I don't like it, Peter Riley. Yeah. I like it because I become Nick fans in '92. Okay, right. Uh, I love this team with Pat Riley, but I don't like it, Pat Riley, when <laughs> this guy go out the next to Miami and Miami. Right. Uh, I I understand about. Uh, Jimmy Butler, because in my country, uh, the major Brazilians, mm -hmm. when uh, uh, major Brazilians like it, Jimmy Butler, right. because Jimmy Butler, friend from Neymar, né? Neymar, <laughs> soccer player. Yeah, soccer, for sure. Uh, uh, we, I forgot. Uh, a friend, né? Did he go Jimmy to Bra Butler. Didn't he go to Brazil a little while ago? Jimmy Butler, I or don't he remember, might have gone but. To But, but Jimmy Butler uh, has uh, talked that uh, uh, he won't play basketball in Flamengo, né, in Brazil, okay. and won't uh, play a soccer <laughs> in Santos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he mentioned in the World Cup, uh, World Cup soccer, uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler né, has a Brazilian fan in soccer. Uh, people loves né, this guy right. uh, because uh, he talk it. I I like it né, when I I hear this this guy mention né, uh, like Brazilian soccer. Right. Uh, but but uh, he play in Miami, bro. Uh, <laughs> uh, next I Miami. Yeah. <laughs> It's complicated, bro. But I I, I like this guy. I like this guy. But I prefer Denver. Yo, kid. Uh, win this game okay mm -hmm. but i understand my country so many people like so much né? miami right. heat and jimmy butler obviously right né? right uh trey uh bro i love this interview bro i love For this sure. interview uh, hey, thank you, you know, so me much really, really quick me and my family really like appreciate you guys um not just supporting my brother but the knicks as well taking all the time i know the games come on at crazy hours so i think it's amazing that you guys are such diehard fans so really appreciate it i hope it meet you meet deus and azorte in the future yeah. come to brazil bro come to brazil uh, he may be making an appearance in brazil soon <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Trey. Thank you no so problem. much, and uh, no problem. very successful for you in your career, bro. Thank you, thank you, bro. <laughs> Take I care. see bye you, bye. bro. Bye bye. bye. E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Unifens Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Unifens Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, 
compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan.